Hello everybody, my name is Dalton Nelson, and today I'd like to talk about a game I just beat, that game being Light Crusader for the PC. Light Crusader was developed by Treasure, published by Sega, and it is an action-adventure dungeon-crawling game. Treasure is a video game company that I have never talked about on this channel before, and their games are completely new to me. In all seriousness, I love Treasure games. Even something like Dynamite Heady, which I reviewed poorly, still has a bunch of creativity and quality packed into it. So I think it comes to no one's surprise that I would continue to look into their gameography into the 2020s. So today's game we're discussing is Light Crusader, a rather unconventional title for Treasure, as instead of a weird, humorous, and ridiculous game like what they're known for with Gunstar Heroes and Sin and Punishment, like Crusader is a fantasy game. And when I say fantasy game, we're talking about knights, orcs, dungeons, magic, wizards, that type of fantasy game. Which, going off of my previous reviews like my Dragon's Dogma review, that type of straight fantasy doesn't click with me as it does with others, so I was a little nervous going into this. Adding to this apprehension was the perspective Light Crusader is presented in. Light Crusader is a 3D isometric title that was on the Sega Genesis. This flat projection of the gameplay, which has platforming and combat, is something I knew would have perspective and depth problems going into this. Not to mention what kind of archaic calculations to the jump height and collisions would be happening in the background. So the odds seemed stacked against Light Crusader, and I was afraid I would be giving another negative review to one of my favorite developers' games. Well, I can happily say that Light Crusader turned out to be a really fun experience, where, yes, some of my fears were met, but the negatives this game bolsters are few, compared to all of the positives Light Crusader brings. Let's start out with that fantasy aesthetic I was so worried about. Compared to Dragon's Dogma boring, grey, muted tones, Light Crusader is very vibrant. The look of the game is impressive. The sprites for the environments are very well detailed, very well drawn. I really like the floors in the game, which most have a grid pattern which convey depth and distance to the player subconsciously. Of course, it wouldn't be a treasure game without some great looking bosses, which include dragons and giant spiders, and this monster that's like a shell with multiple holes in it that its eyeball moves in between. The human character sprites are also pretty good. The only thing I dislike look-wise in Light Crusader is the facial portraits when you're talking to someone. It's clear that Treasure didn't have much space to work with on these portraits, and they clearly wanted to show their skill by drawing some realistic, detailed looking faces. But the sacrifices they needed to make in order to do so make these portraits look poor. Like, half of the protagonist's face is a solid color to convey shading, but it looks like a blobby mess. Other than that, the aesthetics overall, and even the cover of the game, looks like it comes straight out of a Dungeons & Dragons manual, which is really cool. Speaking of cool, the 3D aspects of Light Crusader actually work really well. The player moves in a 3D isometric plane, where most of the hallways are laid out diagonally. Thus, the player is given 8 directions they can move in, up, right, down, left, and the diagonals in between. Moving around in Light Crusader's environments feels smooth. Of course, there is also a third axis where objects will protrude from the ground, and the player has to jump onto them to complete their tasks. Again, this is handled very well. I will say that it does take some getting used to at first, and sometimes things like distance and height can be a bit hard to discern, but for the most part, the 3D platforming is executed very well. I'm surprised. There are two instances I can think of where that depth can get in the way of the enjoyment, however. One being the close quarters combat, where the player will swing at enemies with their sword. This slash while it has some range and can deflect incoming projectiles, is more so close to the character. This means you have to get very close to the enemy to hit them with your sword. Often I found that I was taking more damage than I was dealing, because I had to basically rub up against the enemy to hit them, and the depth can cause you to think that you're close enough to an enemy when you actually aren't. 
The other element that was affected negatively by depth problems are a puzzle object that's introduced later on in the game. There are these spheres that are pushable by walking your character into their sides. Once pushed, these balls will roll until they hit something. Sometimes the depth would cause me to hit a sphere when I didn't want to, but the most annoying part is when you are required to jump onto these spheres, where you have to maneuver your character on the sphere when he is at his peak jump height, anything less, and his feet will bump into the sphere, causing it to roll, often messing up the puzzle. And if you mess up the puzzle, you have to leave the room and enter it again to reset the entire thing. You can't push things if they are up against a wall, so when this happens to a ball you need to roll, it can really screw you over. And while we're on the puzzles, for the most part they are some very well designed brain teasers, often leaving me to wonder what I wasn't doing right, only to look up the solution and go, oh, okay, I was stupid. There are a few puzzles that are frustrating to deal with, most of them include the spheres mentioned prior. So what is Light Crusader about? What do you do? Well, you play as David, a knight from another realm who is assigned to Green Row to help its king and his people out with a crisis. People from Green Row are suddenly going missing. David must find out where they're going and put an end to these disappearances. From here, David finds a hidden dungeon in the cemetery, and he descends into its depths to uncover its secrets. As you play, you start to realize the entire game is one giant dungeon, with its levels being the floors within it. The more you descend, the harder the game gets. You'll find that Light Crusader is a very meat and potatoes dungeon crawler. You explore the dungeon floors as rooms, solving puzzles and finding the key items you need to continue, with each floor having two bosses I think, with the second one you encounter, uncovering the stairs that will lead you down further into the dungeon. At the perfect length of 6 to 8 hours, Light Crusader's experience is packed tight, with no moments where I felt the game dragged on except for maybe floor 3 if I had to pick a weak floor. Everything else though is very well designed, so that the player's attention never wanes. There is always moments where Light Crusader will bring the player back into its dungeon crawling adventure. Besides the dungeon, there is also the hub town of Green Row the player can teleport back to from certain rooms. Here, the player can rest at an inn, buy supplies like food that can be used to restore health, and talk to the villagers. The dialogue system can be a bit clunky, especially when trying to buy items which require you to walk into them to buy them, and a dialogue box will pop up confirming your purchase. The problem comes in when the purchase is complete and you try to walk away from the item, but you being inside that item's collision box will trigger the dialogue box to pop up again, and thus you have to try to walk away a few pixels more each time you exit the dialogue until David isn't touching the item anymore. It isn't necessary to visit Green Row very often, but it does provide a break from the normal gameplay loop. All of this is scored with some very nice fantasy style music that keeps the tone consistent. The more you play the game, the better you get at playing it. Plus, Treasure puts some items into the game that will make David stronger, like extensions to his maximum health, better swords, and better armor pieces. Of course, the most impressive method of attack Treasure provides is how they implement magic into Light Crusader. In classic Gunstar Heroes fashion, Light Crusader contains four elements of magic, fire, wind, earth, and water. Each of these alone, when equipped, will cast a spell. But you can also combine elements for much more complex spells, like wind and earth making lightning, and combining all four will damage all enemies in the room. Every time you use a spell, a unit of each element will be used up, so be careful when using the same spell multiple times, as your elements can run out. It's great to see Treasure using similar mechanics from previous games in new ways. This magic system is fun to experiment with, and I found myself favoriting some spells over others, thus developing my own method of play. It all makes for a very enjoyable experience. I am so glad that I am continuing to be surprised at what Treasure has to offer, and Light Crusader really stands out from the rest of their work, with its unconventional style and forward-thinking gameplay. So I'm thinking about giving it a final score of a high 7 out of 10, 
Is Light Crusader perfect? No. Is it very fun? Hell yes. At $1 on Steam, Light Crusader deserves your time. It's a very fun dungeon crawler with a tight structure with smooth 3D movement and a great magic system. Please make sure to pick up and play Light Crusader. It's very fun. That concludes my review of Light Crusader. If you like my reviews, you can like, comment, or subscribe. I also have social media links down in the description below, as well as a link to my backlog profile and my online portfolio where you can see video game design works that I have done. And with that out of the way, please make sure to have a nice day.